Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to see an introduction about state space analysis. So first, let me start with the concept of state. So to explain what is mean by state, consider the network shown here. Right. So here in the given network, you see this is our input voltage and we are having a network of resistors and capacitors. Right. So in this circuit, we must calculate what is the output voltage, right? So here, in order to calculate the output voltage, it is mandatory to know the voltage across the capacitor here, right? Because capacitor is an energy storing element. So it is must to check the voltage across the capacitor before we calculate the output voltage, right? So the knowledge of initial voltage of the capacitor is required to calculate the output voltage, right? So here we are considering only the capacitor, not about the resistor here because the capacitor and inductor are energy storage elements whereas resistor won't store any energy, right? It dissipates energy in the form of heat. So the knowledge that is the initial voltage of the capacitor is mandatory to calculate the output voltage, right? So here the output of the system not only dependent on the input voltage, right? But also it depends upon the initial conditions. Here the initial conditions just refers the state of the capacitor, whether it has any energy stored or it is in the neutral form, right? So, hence these type of systems are called dynamic systems or systems with memory, right? So, broadly the systems are classified into two types. One is known as static system and another one is dynamic system. So, which systems are known as dynamic systems? Whenever the system has capacitor or inductor in it, then the system is said to be dynamic systems because the capacitor and inductor are known as energy storage elements. So whenever a circuit has capacitors or inductors or both, then the systems are denoted as dynamic systems. Right. Now we are moving to another circuit. You see here we are having a circuit with all resistors. Right. No inductor, no capacitor. Again, here we are having input voltage. We need to calculate the output voltage over here. So here in this case, the output voltage of the system depends only on the input voltage. Do you agree? Because here we are having only resistors. So it depends, the output voltage depends upon the input voltage. So this type of system is known as static system or system with zero memory, right? Am I making the concept clear? Yes. So to conclude, here we are having two types of state. One is known as static state and another one is known as dynamic state. Right. So next we are proceeding with state space formulation. So just now we know what is mean by state, right? Yes. So here the state of a dynamic system is a minimal set of variables such that the knowledge of these variables together with the knowledge of inputs completely determines the behavior of the system. Right. So when you read like this, you people cannot understand. So just I will explain with the diagram then we will again come to this. So here you see, here we are having a control system. Right. And this control system has some input variables right so we are having system input right and we are also we are having state variables right so just now we explained right what is mean by state so here the same thing we are having a system we are having some inputs and we are having some state variables and this input along with the state variables will contribute the output of the system Right. Do you people agree with this? Here we are having input. Along with the input, we are having some state variables. So these state variables and these inputs will contribute the output of this system. Right. 
just now as we seen in the circuit in the initial circuit we are having capacitor right so that capacitor will contribute some state variables so that capacitor variable along with the input voltage will contribute the output voltage right similarly here input variable along with the state variables contribute the respect to output variables right so this is what mentioned here you see now it will be quite clear for you the state of a dynamic system is a minimal set of variables such that the knowledge of these variables that is state set of variables refers to state variables here right state variables together with the knowledge of inputs okay input variable the input variable and the state variable completely determines the behavior of the system here the behavior is nothing but output of the system right so here that is the time should be always greater than t0 t0 is nothing but initial state of time during which the capacitor or inductor gets charged right so that is the thing the state of a dynamic system is a minimal set of variables that is state variables together with the input variables contribute the behavior or output variables of the system right so the set of variables which describes the system at any time instant are called state variables right so whatever may be the time instant that is that why here we are mentioning it as dynamic system right so the variables which describes the system at any instant whatever may be the time right they are known as state variables so in state space formulation formulation a system consists of m inputs p outputs and n state variables right so here we are limiting the inputs to m and outputs to p and state variables to n that is this m p and n denotes the maximum number okay maximum number of inputs so here you see input variables are denoted as u1 u2 u3 and the maximum is m right so only here we are denoting it as m inputs similarly p outputs so here the maximum value of that is maximum limit of p output is p here so y1 y2 y3 it extends up to p and here you see we are having state variables right so the state variables the maximum limit is n so therefore x1 x2 and xn right so when we draw a simplified form of the above system here our system looks like this right here we are having the control system and here u denotes input variables and y denotes output variables and x denotes the state variables right so this is known as the state space representation of a system so here the different variables are represented in the form of matrix that is specifically column matrix right so here the input vector that is input variables are represented as input vector and here the input vector is u of t and this u of t has u1 u2 up to um and similarly output vector is y of t and here the variables are y1 y2 up to yp and regarding state variable vector here the state vectors are x1 x2 and it extends up to xn here right and the next one is state equations so here the state variable representation can be arranged in the form of n number of first order differential equations that is the state state variables okay to represent state variables we can represent it in the form of differential equations also right so here you see the state variables are represented as that is x1 dot okay this means that first differentiation of x1 so it is dx1 by dt right so dx1 by dt is written as a function of here x1 x2 represents the state variables okay state variables along with the input variables so here these are the state variables and these are the input variables right and the next one is dx2 by dt so that is nothing but x2 dot and here the function is again 
in the form of state variables and input variables and likewise we are extending up to our final value that is n is the maximum value of the variable state variable so here we are writing it in the first order differential equation right so here the n number of differential equations may be represented in the form of vector notation right so the differential equations can be represented as x dot of t is equal to f of it is nothing but function of state variable along with the input variable so x of t comma u of t right so here what is known as input space here input space is nothing but the set of all possible values which the input vector can have at a time t forms the input space of the system that is we all know that u of t represents the input right so the maximum possible values right which the input can have at time t is known as input space similarly the set of all possible values which the output vector can have at time t is known as output space of the system and finally the set of all possible values which the state vector can have at that specific time forms the state space of the system right am i making the things clear that is the maximum possible values at a specific time t right it contributes if you consider u of t then it contributes the input space because u of t represents input and here y of t represents the output right and finally x of t represents the state space of the system right so this is just an introduction about state space analysis if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you